The major challenge for getting a GLP-1 that can be taken orally is that GLP-1 receptor agonists are peptides, and peptides are essentially proteins which are dissolved by stomach acid and enzymes in the stomach to aid their digestion. So if you take a peptide orally, such as a GLP-1 or indeed insulin, then it rapidly gets destroyed and is inactive when it's absorbed. The trick that has been used with semaglutide is to incorporate something called SNAC, which is an agent that is co-formulated with the semaglutide. And so when you take the tablet, you're taking both of these products at the same time. And the SNAC reduces, oh, sorry, raises the pH of the stomach, so it makes it less acidic. And that allows the peptide to survive for longer. And it also enhances the ability of the peptide to cross the barrier between the, the inside of the stomach and the circulation. So semaglutide can then be absorbed into the bloodstream. And once it's into the system, it's exactly the same as subcutaneous semaglutide. So it has the same very long half-life. So even though an awful lot of it is not absorbed and you only absorb a tiny percentage, because it's there hangs around for a long time, a weak half-life, for example, it means that any fluctuations from day-to-day -day absorption get ironed out and you get an effective treatment that can be taken once a day. One of the downsides is that when you've got these two agents together in the stomach, you don't need anything else there. And so it's got to be taken after a fast, so typically a six-hour fast overnight, and it should be taken just with a half a glass of water, but with no other food or beverages. And that situation should be maintained for about 30 minutes after the tablet has been taken. So there is a little bit of training involved with taking it, but for most patients, if they see a therapeutic effect, then they're able to comply with that regime. It's very difficult to know how dominant or otherwise an oral GLP-1 will become given that there are various products currently available on the, on the market that can be taken subcutaneously. It may well be that some people just can't get round the idea of not having anything to eat or drink, so coffee, for example, for 30 minutes after taking the tablet. And there'll be others for whom a once weekly GLP-1, of which there are two or three on the market now, would be more convenient. So I don't think this is automatically the death knell for all the other GLP-1 receptor agonists, but it will create a lot more choice for patients going forward. So I think the take home messages from the quite extensive Pioneer uh, program for oral semaglutide is that people can comply with the regime. So they do get good reductions in HbA1c and good reductions in weight. Uh, the side effect profile seems to be pretty similar to that seen with other GLP-1 receptor agonists. So, for example, there doesn't seem to be more nausea and vomiting despite this tablet being taken on an empty stomach. And then the efficacy of the uh, semaglutide really is quite uh, staggering. It's better than everything that it's been compared with. And that includes 1.8 milligrams of liraglutide, which is a current market leading GLP-1 receptor agonist. There's no doubt that it's superior in both weight reduction and glucose uh, lowering to empagliflozin in top dose, that's an SGLT2 inhibitor, to citagliptin, that's a DPP-4 inhibitor. Uh, it's good at add-on to insulin and good at add-on to SGLT2 inhibitors. Also, it has good data from a cardiovascular trial showing that it was non-inferior to placebo, but with a hint of superiority. That's currently being tested with the SOUL trial, which is a cardiovascular outcome trial uh, looking for superiority over the next four to five years. And it's also tolerated in people with chronic kidney disease. And they're often a very difficult group to treat because they tend to be a bit frailer and more prone to adverse events, but they did very well on this preparation. So oral semaglutide has been compared with the other two, what you would call modern uh, oral anti-diabetic agents, the SGLT2 inhibitors and the DPP4 inhibitor. 
the SGLT2 inhibitor, it was compared with empagliflozin at a dose of 25 milligrams once daily and was superior both in terms of HbA1c reduction and weight. Um, with sitagliptin, there have now been two studies looking at semaglutide, oral semaglutide versus sitagliptin, and both confirming superiority in terms of weight and HbA1c reduction. So it looks like this is going to be the best oral in class when it is launched. I think choosing the, the patient cohorts that will benefit from oral uh, semaglutide, I think it's going to be difficult because it's been trialled in a huge, broad section of people with type 2 diabetes. So going from initial treatment, that's in treatment-naive patients, right the way through to people who are being treated with basal insulin. So I think it will come down to being a very individual decision between the clinician and the person with diabetes as to whether this is the choice for them. Clearly, price will have an impact as it does in most healthcare systems. And so that's something that we will discover after launch. But I, I think there'll be lots of patients who will be potentially suitable for this medication. And it'll just be a question for getting a feel as to which are the best ones for it.